Hey friends, welcome to the YouTube channel All About Electronics. So in this question, we have been given the circuit, and here we have been asked to find the output voltage of the given circuit. So in this question, we have been given that all the transistors are identical, and they have a very large value of the common emitter gain beta. And here we have been also given the relationship between the base emitter voltage VB and the collector current IC. So here we have been also given that. The voltage at this node, or this VP, is equal to 0.7 volt, and the thermal voltage is equal to 26 millivolt. So here we have been given that the voltage at this node is equal to 0.7 volt. Now, if you see over here, then all the transistors are the diode connected transistors, meaning that here the collector and the base terminals of these transistors are connected together. That means the voltage at the collector and the base terminals will be the same. And here, the emitter terminal of these transistors is connected to the ground terminal. So, if you see over here, then for these transistors from Q2 to Q32, the collector voltage VC is equal to 0.7 volt, and the same voltage will also appear at the base terminals. So, we can say that over here, this VB2 is equal to VB3, that is equal to this VB32, that is equal to 0.7 volt. And here, the emitter terminal of all the transistors is connected to the ground terminal. That means over here, this VB will be equal to 0.7 volt. So we can say that for the transistors from Q2 to Q32, this VB2 that is equal to this VB3 that is equal to this VB32, it will be equal to 0.7 volt. That means for all these transistors. The base emitter voltage VB will be equal to 0.7 volt, and here we have been given that the relationship between the collector voltage and the base emitter voltage is equal to I S times this e to the power this VB divided by V T. So here, for the transistors from Q2 to Q32, since the base emitter voltage is equal to 0.7 volt, so the collector current from all these transistors will remain the same. So we can say that over here. This IC2 that is same as the IC3, and similarly that is same as the IC32. So in general, let's say that is equal to collector current IC. So now let's say the current through this branch is equal to IX. So by applying the KCL, we can say that this current IX is the summation of all the collector currents of these transistors. That means here this current IX is the summation of the collector currents. From the transistor Q2 to Q32, or that is equal to 31 times IC. Let's say this is the equation number one. That means here this current IX is equal to 31 times IC. So similarly, now let us see the collector current of this transistor Q1. Now here, if you see this op-amp, then it is used with the negative feedback. And here, since the op-amp is the ideal op-amp, so we can apply the concept of the virtual ground. That means here the voltage at this V minus or the inverting terminal of the op-amp will be same as the voltage at the non-inverting terminal. Or in other words, we can say that for this given op-amp, this V minus is same as the V plus. So here, if you see this voltage V plus, then that is same as the voltage which is appearing at the base terminal of this transistor Q1. Or in other words, that is same as the voltage V B1. So we can say that over here. This V minus is same as the V plus, and that is equal to this V B one. So now, as per this relation, we can say that the collector current of this first transistor, or this I C one, is equal to I S times this e to the power this V B one divided by V T, where the V T is the thermal voltage, and here this V plus and the V minus is same as the V B one. Moreover. The voltage at this node is equal to V out, so we can say that this current I C one is equal to this V out minus this V B one divided by twenty kilo ohm. That means here the current which is flowing through this twenty kilo ohm resistor is same as the I C one, because here since the op-amp is the ideal op-amp, so no current is flowing into the op-amp terminals, and therefore this current I C one. Will be same as this current. So similarly, 
Now let us find the current through this another 20 km resistor. So once again, the voltage at this node is equal to Vb1. So we can say that this current is equal to V out minus Vb1 divided by 20 kilo ohm. Or if you see this current, then that is same as the current Ix. So we can say that this current Ix is equal to V out minus this Vb1 divided by 20 kilo ohm. And the same current will also flow through this 5 kilo ohm resistor. So further we can say that this current is same as this Vb1 minus Vp divided by 5 kilo ohm where this Vp is equal to 0.7 volt and we know that this current Ix is equal to 31 times Ic. So we can say that this 31 times Ic is equal to V out minus this Vb1 divided by 20 kilo ohm that is equal to this Vb1 minus 0.7 divided by 5 kilo ohm. That means if we compare the second and the third equations, then we can say that this collector current IC1 is same as the current IX. That means this current IC1 is equal to 31 times IC. And we know that this current IC1 is equal to IS times this e to the power this Vb1 divided by Vt. Where this Vb1 is the voltage across the base and emitter terminal of this transistor Q1. And similarly, this IC is equal to this IS times e to the power this 0.7 divided by Vt. Because for this 31 transistors, this Vb is equal to 0.7 volt. So here, this IS will get cancelled out on both sides. And further, if we simplify it, then we can write it as this 31 is equal to this e to the power this Vb1 minus 0.7 divided by Vt. So now, if we take the natural log on both sides, then we can write it as this natural log of 31 that is equal to this Vb1 minus 0.7 divided by Vt. And here, this Vt is equal to 26 millivolt. So if we further solve this equation for the Vb1, then the value of this Vb1 will come out as 0.7892 volt. That means this voltage is equal to 0.7892 volt. So now, since we know this voltage, then we can easily find the output voltage. So now, to find the output voltage, once again let us compare these two equations. Because we know that this current IC1 is same as the current Ix. That is V out minus Vb1 divided by 20 kilo ohm is same as the Vb1 minus 0 0.7 divided by 5 kilo ohm. So now we already know the value of this Vb1. And from that we can easily find this output voltage. So further we can write this expression as this V out minus this 0 0.7892 volt divided by 20 kilo ohm that is equal to this 0 0.7892 volt minus 0 0.7 volt divided by 5 kilo ohm. So now, if we further simplify this expression for the output voltage V out, then the value of this V out will come out as this 1.1463 volt. That means this output voltage V out is equal to 1.1463 volt. So in this way, we found the output voltage for the given circuit. So from this, we can say that for the given circuit, the output voltage V out is equal to 1.146 volt.